Welcome Zoro Cats to the show pop. The show. Uh, we're going to pick a number out of the hat. We're going to pick a number out of the hat. And today we have number. I think this is 19. 19. So we shall go to our slides. All right, and number 19. We have Fern Prothallis section. So we will be learning about the Fern Prothallis section, and we are going to be talking about that very shortly. Let's get into it. Welcome, Zoro Cats! Oh, I got a fluff on me. <laughs> Welcome, Zoro Cats, to another episode of 200,000 Times Closer. We are going to be taking a look at some prothallus of a fern under the microscope today and learning quite a bit about it. But first, I thought it would be interesting if we took a look at the common housefly, because wouldn't that be cool? I think it could be fun. We shall see. We shall take off our glasses, because uh, we shan't waste the battery. We won't really need them, do we? Uh, first, I have here a common house fly, and this common house fly, let me tell you, he lived quite a life, died of natural causes. Oh my word. Well, there's the face of this bug. Well, he wants to be seen at one angle and one angle only. You can see his mouth, the sideways moving little pincers that they are. Now we can see him a little better from the top. Oof. Now he's white, gray, black, but he's covered with these hairs, these bristly hairs. You can see here on the wing, That is something. So this is a keratin here that makes up the wing. It's a protein. See spiky, spiky bottom. Hmm. In any case, the common house fly. We shall retain him. Most likely, we'll just throw him in the trash. Okay. So as I said today, we are discussing the fern prothallus and the fern reproduction. Uh, the prothallus, in uh, and of itself, uh, is a gametophyte. A gametophyte is similar to a um, an off branch. Like uh, if you were to have a gamete, that plant replicates exactly to the parent. The gamete is dropping the seed, the seed grows into the parent, uh, an identical copy. But the gametophyte is a sub-branch, a, a sapling if you would. The gametophyte, it is a separate entity that grows just for the purpose of reproduction. And in the gametophyte you have the male and female, uh, the sperm, the egg, and uh, we're going to get back to that here. I can call them the, the true names, the the sperm is actually the antheridium. The female is the archegonium, okay? But that is the sperm and the egg. So what you have is the full fern plant. The, the fern plant is made up of fronds, which is, are the branches. The fronds have pinnae, which have the individual leaves, and on those leaves, the underside, they create spores. Uh, so the sporangia, the clusters and all, they are grown and they drop, they, in the spores, have the potential to make a gametophyte. The gametophyte in and of itself is a heart-shaped plant that we're going to see here, uh, also known as the prothallus. So the prothallus is different than most uh, reproduction processes because it is going to create a separation. It is a protecting barrier for the, the lineage of the plant. Instead of having a mutation or a defect that is passed directly from uh, father to son, that you're going to have a subspecies and if there's a, a toxic mutation then the gametophyte will die and will not recreate 
another plant. So that is the benefit of having this system of reproduction. So here in the microscope, if I may switch back. All right. Now we are looking at the fern prothallus section under the microscope. Now it seems that we are very much in focus. Okay. But we do want to explore the area. I see one small section there. Is that a side section? That would be disappointing, wouldn't it? Considering we're missing the heart shape altogether. Interesting. So this is the gametophyte section that they gave us. Of course, the gametophyte in and of itself is about two millimeters wide. So this section of that is, is basically, it looks like cell walls. Yeah, these are plant cells. I don't see anything very exciting, but we'll speak to it anyway. The sapling, this gametophyte, this prothallus, heart-shaped, on the upper side, you're creating the eggs, the female side of the DNA, and on the lower side, you're creating the sperm, the, uh, the, <clears throat> I wish I could remember the word, callback. Now, this needs water in order to reproduce. Uh, this is not a plant that would exist in dry climates because the gametophyte exists in the water and the sperm swims through the water to the female side creating a zygote. The zygote then can be bred into a full uh, fern plant. Um, so we'll put that up here and you can examine that for yourself. I'll also have other uh, collected works of people who could express that. Uh, in the meanwhile, I do want to jump in closer on this prothallus section. So what I'm seeing here, mostly rigid cells from the plant. And uh, now it's hard to say. Is this the, uh, the sperm or the egg, the ova? It is a shame indeed. This is a shame. We're going to go in close on this dye section here. All right. So we'll take a look at this. I would like to get some more information. So we'll have a brief pause. And we're back. So with a bit more information, I'm gathering that these are the antheridia, uh, which is the male sperm and uh, based on their shape and their, their general appearance. Which uh, deductive reasoning is always a big part of science. Now mind you, I'm not a scientist, I'm just a curious fellow. So, there we are. Now we do need to adjust our light. Sorry. Bit of difficulty there. Where's my shade? Here we are. So there we have it. That'll do for the fern prothallus. I hope that we all learned a little something at least. I was hoping for the full heart shape in the slide, but you know, we don't always get what we want, which is okay. 
the, uh, the benefit is that we can speak to the male section of the prothallus and in creating these, of course, it's important to know that they also have the tails that spin similar to a animal male sperm. So only in water can they swim to the female uh, archidonia, if I'm not mistaken, and in doing so create another fern. Uh, so they can reproduce asexually or they can reproduce uh, within the species, you know, amongst each other. Uh, well, that'll do it for us today, and as always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you again very soon. It's always my pleasure, and I thank you for joining me. If you thought this video was magnificent, then be sure to click the like button. You can always share. Be sure to subscribe by clicking the icon in the credits, and as always, my best to you.